Hello and welcome to your Astrological Vibrations for Monday, February 18th, 2019 by Gaia Blooming. I am Mimi and our energy mantra for today is, I work with whatever shows up. And today we have some big things. We have the sun moving into Pisces and that's going to be the theme of sun in Pisces is working with what shows up. That's really how you are in the flow. You are not in the flow by always knowing and controlling what's happening, but by working with what shows up uh, in the context of how you are called to work with the energy showing up. So we have that and we're going to dig into it obviously, more over the next 30 days. But the really big thing that I want to get into, and I hope that I can adequately um, bring forth the messages that I feel with this, is Chiron in Aries. And this feels big. It feels major. It feels like a paradigm shift. I mean, today's astro energy between the sun shifting signs, Chiron shifting signs, building into our first uh, Mercury retrograde shadow period, building into this full moon and a yod, it definitely feels like, oh, okay, we're walking through a doorway and and here are your papers, here are your lessons, here is this map. So let's dig into this Chiron in Aries thing. Chiron was in Aries on and off <clears throat> between 1968 and 1977. So if you were born during that time, there's a good chance you have Chiron in Aries, or it may have retrograded back into uh, Pisces for a minute or forward into Taurus for a minute, but chances are you have that. So that means you are in now entering your period of Chiron return. And this is major. When I talk to people about their Chiron returns, there's always some kind of healing crisis going on. Now, sometimes it comes to the physical body and there is a physical healing crisis with Chiron energy. But Often, even more so, there is a spiritual crisis. And that reminds us that healing is not just this linear thing. Here's what's wrong with you and here is the fruit or the herb or the medicine and you're better. Healing always has its emotional and spiritual connotations that are with it. And that's what I want to remind us all of and wake us all up to with Chiron in Aries. Chiron in Aries is giving us an opportunity to really heal on that spiritual soul level. Now, Aries has many different <clears throat> layers that we can look into. Aries is the sign of the warrior. So it can be about waking up the warrior within. But the thing I think we all can focus on and need to focus on in this uh, earthly climate that we are in is the level of the I am, the soul I am level. Remembering who we really are. We have for lifetimes <laughs> put on cloaks of identity. I am astrologer. I am businessman. I am chef. I am entrepreneur. And we wear our identities and we wear our names and we wear these ideals that we live. And yet beneath all of that, there is something that is ticking, something ticking with all in all of us. And sometimes it's not like, yeah, you're on the right track. Keep going. And a lot of other times it's like, there's so much more than this. I feel like the ticking of there's so much more than this is going to be heightened for all of us with Chiron and Aries. And that ticking within us that's saying there's so much more than this is our soul, our soul map, our soul lesson, our soul purpose, our soul energy that's wanting us all, all to wake up to the human soul potential, human potential of embracing the soul and living from a place of there's so much more than this. Now, this is where the warrior comes in, where we need to heal the warrior. Because in order to embrace that energy, it means often going against what we have learned and having that strength, courage to be of the heart in order to embrace the soul energy at hand and take the next steps. It often does not <laughs> require being complacent or following everything that you have been shown to be true. 
And so during Chiron and Aries, we all have this ticking that I do believe is becoming louder and louder and louder. And we're all being asked to step up in ways of the unknown. I love the story that I once read about the Zodiac, how Aries was like, well, somebody's got to be first, so I'm diving in head first. That is the spirit of Aries. Aries does not necessarily see a path before them. Aries blazes a path. So with Chiron and Aries, we all have the opportunity to embrace that Aries spirit of blazing the path. Again, according to that soul energy that is within, that we all need to get in touch with. So various uh, dis-ease um, of many ways, whether it's lack of ease in your lifestyle, lack of ease in your job, lack of ease in your family, lack of ease in your physical body, is at this time pushing you into waking up. If you feel a lack of ease at some place in your in yourself, this is a wake-up call from Chiron, from your soul, to be like, hey, there's more, and I need you to listen to me because... There's more for you, and, and, and it's coded. It's coded within. So we all are going to be working with this energy through this. Now, the tough thing with this is that we all do have different soul energies, different soul um, requirements, different soul missions. So there is no cookie-cutter pattern for opening up to it. The good news is if you feel this, dis-ease, if you feel that energy of there's something more, you're awake to it and it's calling you and just acknowledging it, working with whatever shows up, that feeling that shows up will start drawing you forward. I think the next thing we all need to do during Chiron and Aries is make this commitment to the soul. And this is happening in astro levels on various, various forms where the soul is waking up and taking control or maybe not taking control, but making itself known so that we step back into that place of living soul-led lives. So this is going to be a really powerful time. Now, it's not going to be overnight, and you won't suddenly know what to do overnight. I think that's one of the things, even people who are awake to that dis-ease are like, I don't know what to do. Your commitment to listening, your commitment to the soul, these are the first steps. Other things will be woven or unwound and brought forward in time. But make this commitment during this time to remember who you are on that deeper level. Remember yourself as the soul and remember the warrior within you to take these courageous, courage, heartfelt steps forward uh, according to the soul path and little by little changes will be made because I think that's one of the things we all can see well like wow wow this is this is where we have led the world to okay but it doesn't have to be here and I don't think it's going to be in this state much longer I do think the wake up is so loud at this time one other thing that I want to mention about Chiron in Aries so every zodiac sign um <clears throat> Uh, what's the right word? Every zodiac sign corresponds with various body parts. For Aries, it is the head, the face, the brain, the eyes. And so you may find with Chiron in Aries in general, more head stuff going on. I feel like we have overutilized the head <laughs> in some ways and underutilized the the power of our mind in many ways. And I think this is going to be one of the things that we wake up as we wake up with the soul. Um, more ways to utilize the power of our mind rather than the dictator of our mind. But be very vigilant about things going on with your head and your mind with Chiron and Aries. And do realize that we all do have the power encoded in our soul, the power of healing. So just keep that in mind uh, during this time. All right, so I mentioned there's other things going on today. Sun in Pisces. Sun in Pisces is a time of completing the zodiac year. We're in our last uh, month of this zodiac year, this zodiac cycle. It is a time of 
clearing out loose ends, closing out karma. We just talked about this all with Chiron working in the sign of Pisces. It's a great time of intuition, looking deeper within. I think that connects us very much to the soul. And one of the best things you can do with Pisces time is work with the flow energy. That means working with what shows up working authentically from yourself with what shows up. So we'll talk more about that, but that's an important thing to be aware of in this energy. The Yod, oh, the Yod feels so big in this. So we have a Yod, it is a fast moving Yod because the featured point of the Yod, the finger of God, the finger of fate is pointing at the moon in Leo. And the moon in Leo is reminding us to have to have courage to have heart, to go with heart. Now the Yod connectors are Venus conjunct with Saturn, which we've been talking about. Venus and Saturn in Capricorn, reminding us of our deepest responsibility to the soul energy. And I always love that Rumi quote, you are the soul of the soul of the universe and your name is love. So we have that on one part. And then we have Pisces, we have Neptune and Mercury conjunct in Pisces. So these are like power players. It's like four planets feeding into this moon energy. Mercury and Neptune reminding us that we are spiritual beings in this human experience. And we cannot forget the spiritual side. So much of this disease that we feel is because we have forgotten the deeper spiritual lessons, the deeper spiritual truths that are with us always. So it's remembering divine responsibility, remembering to see the beauty, to see the love. It's remembering our spiritual selves and then moving forward with love. Like, wow, it's such a pertinent yod as we move through this paradigm doorway. So that's huge. So like I said, as part of the odd, we have Venus conjunct Saturn today, and we have Mercury conjunct Neptune today. Such a big astro day. Venus conjunct Saturn. Make this commitment to your soul. Make this commitment to your highest self. It is always there for you, waiting for you to accept that level of responsibility. We all have an ability to respond to what's showing up in the world. Sometimes we show up in a way that our parents would like, that society would like, but if you are selling yourself short, if you are not listening to yourself, then you're doing no one a favor with that. So we have an opportunity to make that commitment on that highest level, make the commitment even to love with Venus there in the picture. Mercury conjunct Neptune. Oh my God, this is such a cosmic contract that is happening in and through this energy. Just realize that there is a deep level of commitment. There's a deep level of these contracts as we move through this energy. There's definitely some level of paradigm shift that is going on. What is your decision? How are you going to utilize this energy? It is always going to be up to you. Now, as Mercury is preparing to enter its retrograde cycle, things may be coming up. Uh, technology may be going wonky. My brain, I swear, is like slowing down and it's getting harder and harder to reach for the words. Be aware of this. But when these things happen, it is to let other information through. With this conjunction with Neptune, there's deep spiritual wisdom that is available to come through, especially if you listen between the lines. You may want to listen to the scope a few times and listen between the lines. What is your soul trying to tell you? Be aware, be listening to the energy that is going on between the lines. <clears throat> I also love today that the moon is connecting to Jupiter. Jupiter in Sagittarius, which expands everything. So Jupiter is expanding this energy of the love, reminding you of the importance to move forward with courage. I feel like for this next year, this is the word. This is the word of the year. To have courage, to move with heart, to go forward full-hearted, because that's how we save the world. 
So I think I'm going to let it go with that. Just realize that with all the shift going on, that stuff may feel a little bit wonky. Um, I didn't mention times. Chiron shifts into Aries at 1.10 a.m. Pacific time. And the sun will move into Pisces at 3.04 p.m. Pacific time. So we go from that 29 degree high vibrational uh, Aquarius energy to Pisces, being in the flow. But again, however you move, remember these lessons of love that we have had coming for us these last like two years and move forward with that with love for your soul mission what would happen if you loved your soul mission what would happen if you loved your soul mission more than anything i don't know it might be just an interesting thing i don't think you would have to um forget other things that you loved if you moved forward with love for your soul mission. I think it just requires remembering who you really are. So I'm going to let it be complete with that. Um, if you'd love to come join me on Patreon, I am going to be going through and bringing the physicality for every house um, for Chiron and Aries. So you can come join me over there for that. I'm going to be doing the Pisces readings very soon as well. So come join me over there. It helps me. It helps me pay my bills. So I thank everybody who does that. And you can always book a reading as well. So that is it for today. Happy Chiron and Aries. I'm sure we're going to dig even further, deeper in with all of this. But I hope I conveyed the power of the ticking that is happening, the remembering that is going on. So you have the power. The better it gets, the better it gets. And there is more than enough love in the world for you. Namaste.